Now that you've seen how to create work planes, we'll circle back and look at creating work axes and work points. They work very similar to work planes, so we should be able to get through both of them fairly quickly. Just like work planes, they're found in the 3D model tab under the work features panel. And just like work planes, each of the work point and work axes options have a drop down menu that lists the different capabilities that you have available to you. You could create a work axis on a line or an edge. You can make one parallel to a line through a point, through two points. As you can see, there's many options. And just like the work plane functionality, selecting one of these items from the list other than the default one at the top will limit the selection based on the type of axis you're trying to create. If you're on line or edge, you'll only be able to select lines or edges. If you're parallel to a line through a point, you'll be able to select lines or points. I'm going to go ahead and use the default option because just like work planes, once you know how to create all of those individual items in the drop-down list, you can create them all from this default option. But before we get into creating the axis, I'm going to step back and use the work plane functionality to create a couple planes that we can use to generate an axis and a work point. I'm going to start by creating a work plane through the middle of this model. I could select this edge and the midpoint of this line, but in this case, I'm going to select the opposite edge and create a work plane between those two parallel planes. You can see it runs right through the center. Next, I'm going to select work plane. I'm going to select the angled face here, and I'm going to select the edge at the corner. I'm going to leave it at 90 degrees, and I'll select the green check mark to create that. And you can now see I have two intersecting work planes. And the reason for this is one of the options is to create an axis through the intersection between two planes. I'll select the default work axis, and I can use the two planes we just created to create a new axis through the intersection of those two planes. If I hover over one plane, and then I hover over and left click on the second plane, you can see we now have an axis shown here in the browser as work axis one that runs directly through the intersection of these two planes. You're typically going to use an axis when you are going to revolve a feature. There's just different ways that you can create axes in locations where you might not have a hole that has a center axis through it. The other option we're going to look at is a work point. Work points can come in handy. Most often I use them when I'm creating lofted features and I need to create rails that follow other parts on the model. But the way to create them is just like a work plane or a work axis. You do have the drop down option that lets you see all the various different types of points that you can create. They all generate a point, but the input used to create the point is different depending on what you select. I'm going to go ahead and select the default point option. And what I'm going to do is show you two different ways to create the same point. One option would be if I want a point right at the intersection of this axis we just created and this plane, I can simply select the plane and then select the axis. And you can see we now have a work point right at that location. If we zoom back out to, and go to the home view, I'm going to right click and select undo. And I can show you another way to create that exact same point. They both create the same point, but the input used is different for each one. I'm going to select my point option, and this time I'm going to select the work plane we created, the second work plane we created, and the angled face. And you'll notice as I hover over the angled face, you see the preview at the exact same point we had the previous point. It's just that we used several different input options to create that same point. And it's up to you as the designer to determine which one is most appropriate for your needs.